in a major league stadium. Um, he's going to get settled in. He's a lefty. And here it's going to say select the pitch type. So occlusion mode, we're really working on um, how well we can recognize and determine, hey, was that a fastball? Was it a slider? A number of different pitches from different distances. So as Carl gets going here, you'll see this blue occlusion box is going to come up. And it's going to start about 10 feet away. And again, these are all real pitchers. We create the 3D hologram based on the video footage and the data we have on every single one of our pitchers. First pitch, fastball. You can see he made that decision. Um, anytime we see green within the application, it'll tell us our decision was correct. Red would mean that we were wrong. And as we get more correct, this blue box will move a little bit further away. And so we have found, uh, really diving into sports science, how the brain and the eyes can process information as that box gets to about 14, 15 feet away, really the last point hitters have to recognize, see the ball, and make the right decision. So Carl's feeling confident he's going to shoot that box back. Yeah, make it a little more difficult. Oh, yeah, 30 feet? Right now, 30. What I, what I like to get to, a challenging spot, at least for me, I mean, this is going to be different for every player. 40 feet is kind of a place I like to put that box. Um, see really the first 15, 20. Gives me enough information where I can kind of pick up difference, especially between fastball, slider, uh, but not enough where I'm 100% confident every time. So it's still challenging. So we'll do one more from further out, and then we'll actually shoot that box back to zero feet. Maybe you have a younger player, somebody yeah. just starting out, and they want to see the whole ball flight here. Right there. Really gives you a good idea. And for those of you at home, hopefully you can see the break on that pitch. A slider, those are kind of the nuances we're trying to pick up on out of the hand, the way the ball is moving, pitch shape. Uh, very important that hitters do this and, and do it correctly. Yeah, what's cool about this is using pitch data, we're not just recreating the same slider break in the different parts of the zone. I mean, hanging slider is going to be a lot different than a slider down in the zone. So we can see those in here as well. Um, so if we Still, are getting a curveball up, it's just maybe not as much movement, good pitch to hit, and we can pick up on those things in here. So this is occlusion mode. We like to start here. Um, really training the eyes. Keep it simple. Again, this is a very hands-off, um, low workload. You're not, there's no physical constraints. It's, it's not exhausting mentally. Uh, it may be a little bit, but guys that are injured sitting at home, um, great way to get a ton of work in. So pitch recognition? Yeah, we're going to go in with a lefty, three quarters. And let's choose all the guys' pitches. So guys have a fastball slider, change up, we'll add another one in there. Select all locations. Again, I like you know, in a game situation, you don't know where the pitch is going to be in the zone, inside, outside. So I like to select all there. So we're back at Win Reality Field. We're at home plate. Carl's a lefty here. He's going to take his normal approach, get his normal stance, his load. We've got a lefty now. Yeah. So now the idea is as the pitch comes in, trying to identify as close as we can down to the inch where we think that ball crossed the plate, and then identifying uh, the pitch types. So you'll see here, Carl got really, really close. Right here where it says placement distance, he was 0.76 inches away, uh, which is pretty elite. Looking back at our major league statistics over the past couple of seasons, they average anywhere from 2 to 2.5. Um, Carl may have a chance. Don't call it a comeback. <laughs> yeah, but you'll see here, I also got the pitch type wrong. So we're bringing that focus into here as well of that red line. There was a little bit of a cut on this pitch. Thought it might have been a slider. I was battling between fastball slider there. Um, but that's the kind of feedback we get. I know personally, having tons of reps in here, uh, against lefties specifically, I sometimes struggle with fastball slider, and then I struggle with locating pitches on the outer half of the zone. Um, so there's a lot of learning that goes on in here um, on our own, just different trends we pick up on. And those are a few things I've probably seen a couple thousand pitches by now. Uh, and even though my playing days are long gone, uh, I'm still focused on certain things and recognize those things as a hitter. So we'll go through a couple more here. Catchers as well at home. Um, the unique thing about VR and really using a wireless headset is we can move around. So if we have a right-handed uh, batter or a catcher, we can sit behind the home plate and work on seeing a 1,000 pitches, whatever it may be. At the end of the day, confidence is key, and this is really a shortcut to visualization. If we can see it before we're actually seeing it in real life in a real game when the pressure is on, um, it's invaluable. That's a good one right there. Wow. 0.15. 0.15. Might want to retire on that one. 
So really close there. He got the pitch type right. You can see green. Decision was correct. You want to squat behind home plate just for one? Yeah. So for catchers, get in your normal position and just really work on sticking pitches. We actually had uh, a couple pro guys, Yadier Merlina and some other guys, using this as catchers this week during spring training, and we're blown away with, with the realism. Yeah, it's just as important for catchers as well. I mean, during an off season or even during the week, a lot of pitchers, especially now they're on a schedule, right? They're focused on games. You might not get as much work in. We can just practice some things in here the same way. So pitch recognition mode, obviously very important, kind of building that mental catalog of pitches uh, going into a week or a season, saying I've seen 10,000 pitches, I'm ready to go, um, really confident against any guy or girl that a hitter may face. So we've done occlusion, we've done pitch recognition, moving down, we'll do quick recognition. You want to do two strikes? Yeah. Put a little pressure on Carl. Uh, this is all about making the right decision in a two-strike count, but also it's called quick recognition for a reason. How well can we make that decision uh, in time? So maybe choose like two or three pitches. Yep. Yeah, I'll choose all two strikes, work on the strike zone. Chose a college guy as well. Challenge so myself a little bit. We're moving up. <laughs> moving up in velocity and sharpness. Um, so back on the field, here it's going to say treat each pitch as a two-strike count and pull the trigger on strikes only. So as soon as Carl can get in his stance and say, okay, it's a two-strike count, I got to know my zone. If it's a strike, I got to make that decision and do so in time. And so actually a pretty good start on this first one. Slider, kind of down in the zone. Uh, we can see it was green. He made the correct decision, and he was also in time. So what's it say there, Carl? 20 feet away was your decision? Yeah, 20.3, and optimal is 26.6. .6. So this is even before the swing is even made. How well can we break down the pitches and say, Two strike count, can I recognize a strike, make that decision in time, um, and hopefully my bat and my barrel get there. So I like to call it that yes, 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 staying aggressive, or yes, yes, no, and being able to hold up on a pitch that's outside of the strike zone. Ball, ball down? No, I caught, it caught the edge. It caught the very bottom of that okay. blue. So that's a strike right there. Where was or, your no, that is a ball. That is a ball. I thought I caught the bottom. Let's look close. Did you take it? Yeah, I took it. Okay, so good take. No decision. So anything outside the zone, obviously that was really close. We want to make sure we can take it. Again, this is our quick recognition mode. Yeah, so just being disciplined in the strike zone. Comes down to getting making that swing decision. Like Andrew mentioned. That was great. Yeah, like Andrew mentioned earlier, the difference between batting average is swinging in the zone, out of the zone. Control what we can. Can't always control an umpire to make the right calls. Uh, but if we're successfully attacking pitches in this zone, we're going to be a lot more successful. And some of you may be asking, well, where's the bat? Why aren't we swinging? Well, what we've set out to do and the feedback we've gotten is you have to be able to visually and cognitively make the right decision, see the ball, um, and be on time. So if we can do that before we even swing, um, it's going to really give us an advantage as we get more into the bat and the physicality of the swing. That one was almost perfect. Yeah, 95%. You can see the efficiency there, 95%. That was really solid. Do one more yeah, here. Take one more. Might have been down. Nope. Bottom of the zone, made the right decision. This guy's keeping everything right below the knees. So very. this is one of my favorite, encompassing a lot of different skills, um, seeing how well we know the zone. To winning the battle of the strike zone, especially with two strikes, is, is really, really key here. So Yeah. Yeah, and seeing the, our decision points, so am I too early and I'm, am I too late, uh, we're not always going to be perfect. We're not going to nail the optimal point every single time. Uh, but let's say we're not feeling so comfortable in the box at that time, get in here, kind of optimize that decision. Are we just guessing and making our decision way too early? Or are we just not very confident in the box and making our decision while the ball is pretty much right out in front of us? Yep. So if, you, if we go back to the main menu, and we go to practice mode, you'll see we have four different training modes within quick recognition, really uh, based on the specific situation players want to work in. I like two strikes, really put some pressure on the hitter. Um, we'll go into, you want to do release point? Let's go in softball and show, okay. show release point training. We'll go in so here. We'll, we're in softball now, we'll do release point training. Here we can choose from a high school, college youth. We have some pro level arms in here as well. Choose a high school. 
And a lot of you coaches or players may have done this, right? You're in the cage, you have a colored ball, or you're looking for a number. Um, how well can we recognize and see the ball right out of the hand? A little bit different field here. Yeah. So this one, there's going to be a colored ball that should flash uh, on the right side of the screen. If that color matches the ball right out of the hand on release, Carl's going to pull the trigger as soon as he can make that decision. Oh, I flinched a little bit. I don't know if it registered. All right, great. So I took this pitch. You see the symbols didn't match. I was looking for a blue symbol, trying to be quick, but also trying to be accurate. My number one goal is to be correct on that decision every, every time. So there's no decision to be made here. It's a good take. You'll see I'm correct with that. Looking for a blue ball again. Saw red, shut it down. Good take. So the ball, yeah, I was just going to say the ball is going to flash really, really quickly. Yep. So if you're not seeing the ball all the way home, that's because it's disappearing uh, upon release. So saw yellow there, correct again. So still being patient. This is good. Just not having to make a decision. But when we finally do get one that match, we'll be able to see our exact decision time, how quickly, quickly we reacted. And so you can come in here. In select, I typically select all the colors. I think it's five in total. So it keeps me on my toes. It's not showing up as often. So when it does, I really have to make my decision. Uh, but we can come in with, let's say we just want to come in with two of the colors, like a green ball like it was here in red. Carl, you want to do a couple from the right-handed box? Yeah. Well, I'll switch with you. Can't see you, though. Yep. There we go. So we're going to change. Uh... You'll see on this one, though, this is a good example, one that's correct. We'll get a decision time, so how quickly did I react to that information and break it down to an efficiency? So 79.73%, that's a pretty good job. My tracking over here is pretty poor. There we go. Y'all may be able to see that ball flash really quickly, but really yeah. trying to pick up and see how well we can see that um, right out of the hand, hence the name release point training. Very important mode, very important skill uh, to be able to practice daily. It was slow on that one, 54% efficiency, 0.44, but correcting our decision. So we're six for six. We can keep tabs on that. We'll do one more here. Yeah. There we go. Not bad. So it's telling him how quickly he made that decision, his efficiency. Really, We really want players to be 65, 70% or higher. Um, all right, let's go back to, uh, to main menu. And for those that, that have joined uh, just recently, we're here showing you baseball and softball, walking through some of the modes. Uh, just a quick demo. We want to be able to answer some questions and really allow you all to, uh, to see firsthand what we're doing here at Win Reality, facing live pitchers, um, and just really being able to see a live pitcher on demand. And we like to call it winning the battle of the strike zone. How well can you win each pitch? Can you be aggressive? But also have the confidence going into each game, each weekend, and each season knowing that you're prepared. So not only is hitting about being physical, it's also about seeing the ball really, really well. Um, and one thing we started with, major league hitters, 286 when they swing inside the strike zone versus 156 when they expand and start to chase. So young hitters at home, very, very important skill to develop um, and practice each day. That's great. So we'll, uh, we'll open it up to any questions, comments, you know, some of you guys have been great and with us the whole time. We appreciate that. Um, yeah, I think real quick, one thing, when you kind of take that headset off, um, you get in there, you compete. Like, I have a little bit of a sweat going, taking that training seriously. Uh, a lot of times, driving yourself to improve every day uh, in everything we do. Yep. Our swings are important when we get in the cage. But this stuff, we want everything to translate to a game we got to be really good up here and with our eyes. Exactly, exactly. And a lot, the results happen quickly, right? So instead of going to a cage, driving out somewhere, let's get 100 hacks in, 100 pitches in, whatever it may be, any time of the day. So first question, what all do I need to use when? So to get started, uh, we recommend creating an account on our website. We're, out, we're actually offering a uh, free or a $25 Amazon gift card for folks that sign up um, anytime now by the end of the month. Yep. And then aside from that, you have your account. Head on over to Amazon and order the Oculus Quest 2. 
Uh, the 64 gigabyte, they're $299. Um, and that's really all you need to get started. So very simple, easy yeah. to use. Yeah, and it comes with these controllers. That's a question sometimes we get. You don't have to find these anywhere separate. Um, Oculus Quest 64 gigabyte comes with those two handheld controllers. Makes it really easy for us to navigate in there. So what's a good cadence for training? Very good question. An hour a day, once a week, what are best practices? Um, and you met, you're, you were yeah. a hitter. You spent a lot of time using this. I would say it really just depends on what a, what a hitter struggles with. The cool thing about this is every player can take a baseline assessment and really gauge what their strengths are, where they have room to improve. Uh, so whether it's five minutes a day, 50 pitches, or they want to spend 20 minutes um, a couple days a week. I don't think there's a wrong time to use it. Yeah, no, and, and to touch on that, I think training as a player, uh, being consistent is huge. Everything you do, you played at the highest level, all those guys you played with, whether it's a pitcher or a hitter, they're disciplined, they're consistent in everything they do. Uh, so obviously, more time we can get in there, the better. Uh, but really for like a session, 10, 15 minutes, get a lot of reps in. A lot of reps in. Um, and just yep. staying with a plan. I mean, not, not just checking something out. Um, we need to work at it daily. We need to make it part of our routine to get better at it. That's it, that's it. Great question. How can I track my own progress? The real-time feedback is great, but what about long-term? Um, so that's one important thing about having users have their own profile. So we send a report weekly based on the previous week's usage, uh, where they have some room to improve, maybe some personal recommendations, and uh, really tracking from week to week, season to season, the progress yeah. they're making. Yeah, and so I think now is a good time to kind of get into one of our modes that we recently added in working with Diamond Kinetics. So one of the modes, beyond our core modes, uh, we've integrated with Diamond Kinetics and using that in our application, uh, and just putting a bat in players' hands. We've done our training, feeling prepared, good place to get in and just compete. Swing at pitches in the zone, um, get really competitive in there. And you'll see right here, we got the DK sensor on the bottom, and then this win reality bat attachment as well, holds the Oculus controller here. Um, get a lot of great feedback. I mean, I know for us, we spend some time in there doing testing, uh, taking swings, and it ends up getting really, uh, really fun, engaging, uh, and just another place where we don't have to get on the field. We can fail in VR. I can be swinging at changeups down, feeling stupid, uh, but it's not showing up on the field. So when I do get there, I have the bat in my hands. I'm ready to go. Yeah, and the bat really ties everything together. So training the eyes, being on time, really owning the plate, being able to win each pitch, and then having the bat in your hand, swinging at pitches in real time, um, and getting that feedback. That's a really important piece. So um, I think that's all we have today. Really appreciate everyone yeah. stopping by. Uh, make sure you head on over to winreality.com, create an account. We'd love to talk, um, and we hope to see you on the win field soon. No, it's awesome. Appreciate you guys coming. Andrew, it was a pleasure. Thank you all very much.